testing and not just a philosophy. And then I will share a lot of examples from our uh, uses of Prometheus. Uh, I should be OK with my phone. My real thing? Or? Uh, is that the one? <laughs> Flux, yes. Flux. Oh, Flux, yeah. I see. Oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah. Didn't know about it. Uh, uh, still trying to connect. Sorry. <laughs> I'm still looking for my phone, okay. I guess. Let me just. Um, so I was saying that, like, uh, there will be uh, my talk about have a more practical introduction to Prometheus, and then Antonio, we will have uh, uh, we will share our journey from our previous uh, monitoring system, that how how we have to scale it, and then I start using Prometheus, and then how we scaling Prometheus. Still not seeing my phone. Uh, it doesn't seem to. I tried that one earlier, but doesn't seem to. So okay, uh, seem to have. Uh, actually, okay, okay, it's connecting. Yeah, it's connected. Okay. Should be cool. All right. I'll just put my phone over here. So uh, this will, uh, like I said, there's some overlap with uh, the physiology from Asini talk. But I'll try to, uh, to skip over the thing that like, he already talked, and then thank for that. I don't have to talk a lot about that. And then I go into a lot more practical thing. Uh, the the goal will actually give you a. Uh, practical idea of how Prometheus look like and how are you going to use it uh, in your monitoring system. So a bit about me, I'm a system reliability engineer at Cloudflare in Singapore. We have a, a small SIE team in Singapore and I've been doing a lot of monitoring uh, for a lot of things over the past five years or something. Uh, I'm a, originally a software engineer so I like to build tools and then I order things. There's a couple of things that I build, some open source, some not open source. Uh, but that uh, you can use for monitoring and everything. And about Cloudflare, uh, we, we are um, one of the biggest CDN and DNS, uh, managed DNS company uh, in the world. By some estimation, we are doing like 10% of internet requests. And that, like, we think it's like uh, about 5 million requests per second, uh, HTTP requests. And then like, we're doing like more than a million DNS requests per second uh, on average, every day. And we have uh, 115 uh, data centers around the world. That's a big one in Singapore as well. And uh, we call them uh, Power Present. And, and we have like 6 million websites that are using Cloudflare. So we that about Cloudflare and about monitoring system. That, that's why we are here. Uh, anyone, uh, how many people here are actually using a monitoring system at work? Or uh, maybe at home? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there are a lot of people. There are some people that are not using any monitoring system. Are you sure that your service is still working? <laughs> um, what kind of monitoring system that you guys are using? Uh, anyone that using any monitoring system? Prometheus. 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 Okay, that's cool. <laughs> then I probably don't have to talk about the other thing. <laughs> um, so there's a lot of monitoring system. And then why we are monitoring uh, stuff? I, we monitor precisely the, m the most important thing to me that I like, you know that when your thing are broken. Like if you're not monitoring, then you don't really know if it work or not. Like uh, if, if you have no, uh, no idea how, what is going on, then like, you're practically flying blind. And, and the other use if, uh, uh, you can use for incident response and then ad hoc deb debugging of when like, something happened and comparing over time like uh, what is the Last quick version uh, compared to this quick version of our software is running faster or it's running slower. Or uh, you can do something comparing over time, like how are you using uh, our CPU for the past quarter or something? Do we need more server in the next quarter? Or do we need more display? That also like analyzing trend and then capacity planning. That, that like, I think the main reason that we need to do monitoring. And um, so, so what is a monitoring system? That, Actually, three main components as a monitoring to me. Uh, the the biggest, uh, not really the biggest, uh, those are mostly equally important. Uh, but uh, one of the important features that like it need to collect and store metric, uh, and the other one is like with those metrics that you are already collecting, you have to be able to query and also displaying them, visualizing, showing them, and and the other uh, the last thing is that like you need to be able to alert thing on thing. 
Uh, another thing is just like sending notification. Uh, you can send it to people, send it to email, or create a Jira ticket. Like uh, it's on con alert thing. So that's the main uh, component of uh, any pro uh, any monitoring system that I think. Some monitoring system do only one of these. Like Nagios, mostly only do alert. There's other system that only do the other thing, collect and store. Uh, and uh, but I think a good monitoring system should have like on three. Um, so. I think nobody is using a traditional monitoring system here. Like we aren't using Prometheus, so probably um, might not got it to talk about it. But anyway, uh, so the traditional way of monitoring that as Asini already shared earlier, that like, the the main unit of monitoring is normally a server or host. Like you you monitoring your DB server, you monitoring your application server, and and the way that you are like, observing and monitoring it actually like running up some external check. Like like this is a uh, sample of the check something that I like, very uh, Common in Nagiot, like you check HTTP, check ICMP, check DNS, uh, check whatever. Uh, it observing the system working from the outside, and then we call it like black box monitoring. Uh, just look at the system at a black box. You don't know what go inside. You only observe it from the outside. And uh, the other thing is that like most of these only have, only have a simple data model and query. Like you have a value, and then like uh, you can do some. Comparison over the value, uh, like you can alert if it go over ninety percent, you can alert it uh, it reach, uh, reach zero or something like that. You don't like. I have a system before that I I, I was using Yabis before at a monitoring system, that I have a lot of server with like one of our common alert actually on uh, this by getting full, but we have a lot of different server. The database server have like uh, ten terabyte of display, the application server only have ten gigabyte. And if you like alerting on some static condition or like if the display usage is over 90%, it would be too late for the application server, but it will be a long way to go for the DB server. And that actually not uh, an easy problem to solve with a, a traditional monitoring system. Like we want some application that like can actually, I, I really want some uh, alert that can say to me that like your server going to have full display in the next four days and you need to be Doing something about that, and and it is just impossible to do with uh, uh, Jabit or other other things system that I know, like five years ago. Um, so what have changed since then? Uh, there's a lot of things have changed. Like uh, one of the main things here, I think a lot of people here also using Kubernetes and Docker. That one of the main change. Like there's a lot of things that can run on your server right now. There's a lot of container, and and those orchestration. Uh, actually moving your container around your host. And then also EC2 and GC actually doing a lot uh, of help, like making it way easier to just launching a bunch of server and setting them down and moving them around. So if, if you're thinking about uh, server or host at the main unit of, for your monitoring, it's not going to be scalable. Like you're not just going to spend a lot of time adding server and removing server, and adding server, removing server. And, and then also micro service, that's a lot of like, it's no longer a simple application stack up like the application, DB, and then I some load balancer. There now like 10 different service like running around. And, and, and actually that's a very hard problem for monitoring as well. So Prometheus, um, so Prometheus have it by embracing something that I, uh, that actually the, that I get that idea from the SIE book as well. It's called Wi-Box monitoring. So you look at the application or the service that you're trying to monitor and you want to observe the thing that going inside it as well, not just uh, everything that you look at it just as a black box. You want to the application to expose it metric, like expose the internal state for you so they can observe and then like uh, be actionable on something that's going on. Like not just going to be like, uh, the main important is that like with black box monitoring, you cannot see if something like, uh, there's a fail that request that like your application already retry. That might not be causing any failure, but might be a, an important uh, indicator. Another thing is that, like, thing, uh, let's think if you have an uh, application server and you also have a DB server, and on the application server, you're observing that the DB server is slow. But if you don't know that, like, what the DB server is believing it is slow or not, how fast it believes it is, and then how fast the application server perceives the query from the DB server. You, you can never distinguish that like, is really the, the DB being slow or is like, the network between the application and the DB server being slow. 
So you also know, look at the DB server, and I also look at the application server, and I see the, how the application think about the DB, and also how the DB think about itself is fast or slow, so that you can like determine the really root cause if it's related to the network between those, or like some of them are being slow. And also building for container and orchestration. So it's uh, primarily because there's uh, a lot of like service discovery building. So it act Prometheus can actually talk to uh, EC2 API. So it like, can get a list of your server and then like, uh, start monitoring them. Or it can talk to uh, Kubernetes, uh, ETCD, or Zookeeper, or anything that you're using. Because we have a system that like, basically using a file discovery. We have an uh, internal API that like, uh, know about all of our server. And any time that like, there's a new server that adding or removing, or service that adding, then we write it down to a file on the file system. And then like, Prometheus just pick it up and then like, uh, uh, start monitoring that server. That we call it a, a file discovery. But then there's also a lot of other service discovery that are already built in for a lot of uh, your orchestration and then like, uh, cloud infrastructure. Uh, I will say a lot more about the other thing later, the, the multi-dimensional data model. And one of the things that I like most about Prometheus is a query language. There are a lot of things that you can do while it, like, remember the example that I said earlier? Now I can do something like that, like going to alert me uh, if my server is going to have a full disk uh, in the next four days. I'm going to show, it, show that query uh, later. Uh, the last thing is scalable. Like, um, it's pretty easy to have uh, more than a million uh, metric or time series that uh, we call it to ingest by one Prometheus server. We uh, we have some big instance that like ingesting like 40 million uh, time series per second, uh, not th per second. Um, I think we have 40 million uh, time series, and we ingesting about, I'm sorry, 500k request per second or metric per second or something like that. And that is only one single server. And you can also do a hierarchy of server. Like you can have uh, global Prometheus that like uh, have a lower layer Prometheus like actually scrapping from other. Uh, or the or the target to monitor, so you can do a very high, uh, very high level hierarchy that are actually very scalable. Uh, this is uh, the architecture of Prometheus. The green color is everything belong to Prometheus, not really be belong to, but like it's, uh, in Prometheus ecosystem. So uh, the central thing, uh, one is the Prometheus server. It have a local story that like Anthony already share about that are very interesting. There's a lot of improvement in the next version, 2.0 version as well. But unfortunately, we haven't uh, really used it in production yet. We're still using the 1.8 version. There are probably a lot of ch uh, chains going. But we hope, hopefully, that we can share about it later. We're like, we in process of like, investigating and like, looking into uh, migrating to 2.0. Um, and then the Prometheus server would actually go in and scrape the metric from this exporter. And job job is something that I just call like the application that expose the metric uh, themselves. Exporter is something that runs alongside with an uh, with an application and exposing the metric. So you can have a lot of exporter, a lot of job, uh, a lot of application server running. And like uh, the way that Prometheus work is actually going to script the uh, metric. It is use a pool basic model instead of push. So it's just different type doing thing. And there's also a push gateway if you cannot do this pool model but I'm not showing here. Uh, another component, uh, big one, is uh, the alert manager. The alert manager is actually managing uh, the alert. Like, so Prometheus server is actually scraping metric from this, and then like evaluate, evo sorry, evaluating the condition for this alert. And then uh, if something that like, should trigger an alert, it's going to send the alert to alert manager. And then alert manager, based on a lot of uh, route definition, it will actually wrap the notification to Pager duty, Slack, email, or Jira. We are using uh, quite a few different something that like need immediate response that we're going to paste uh, the on con person. But something like the server going to be uh, full this in next four days that probably don't need to uh, pay anyone. Uh, anyone. So we're just going to create a Jira ticket for it. And then there's a, some uh, alert manager uh, integration that are actually just creating Jira ticket for you. And Prometheus also have a web UI that uh, you can use in and then like uh, to query to query the metric and then also do some visualization. Uh, there are also uh, 
uh, Grafana integration if you want to use dashboard and then like have a lot more beautiful charge. I'm going to show them later. So, There's a question here. Sorry. I, well, can you give an example of jobs? Like you said, uh, like, like what, parsing a log for scraping metrics? Uh, job is actually something uh, defined, yes. not really defined, but like uh, take from the SIE book as well. So they are call, calling everything that running is your job. Because the way that like Kubernetes or uh, they bought a uh, scheduler, scheduler. Uh, even if a web server is not actually a short live job, it can be a long live job. So it will be a web server or an application. So anything running can be called a job. And then the, the scheduler would actually schedule the job to run somewhere. Be it, so you can just think about the job like a container. That should be. I think, I think you should include, uh, I think it's called gateway. Uh, it's a, a, a push gateway. Yeah, push gateway. Right, push gateway into the picture. Yeah. For short running. Shoot. Sure. So, I think I'm kind of running out of space here, but that, yeah, if you don't really, you have some short leap job that you cannot script, it can be a targeted script, and you can push the metric to a push gateway, and then the Prometheus server will also like pull the, from the uh, push gateway later. That is for like short leap job. So the way it's like uh, expose metric over HTTP. So like I already said earlier, there's the expectation is it, it application or exporter would like expose uh, the metric over an HTTP endpoint, and then Prometheus just going to like scrape them, and they all have a, the same format. Is they are going to make it um, ISO or IEEE uh, standard for exposing metric. This is actually based on the the one from Google Vazi. Uh, as you can have the metric name. And some label attacking it, and then the value. Yeah, and then like, Prometheus just going to scrape on the HTTP endpoint uh, that we can't target. And an exporter, uh, yeah. So most of the application actually prefer really to expose the metric themselves. Like Kubernetes already be, have some built in endpoint to expose uh, internal metric at, uh, uh, at Prometheus uh, format, uh, C advisor, EDCD. But for a lot of other applications that you don't have a set to it, or you don't want to modify the source code, then there's something else that I like call exporter that running belong uh, beside it, and and expose it metric at a Prometheus format so it can scrape. We actually use a lot of uh, this exporter for in our system. Uh, the node exporter which we used for monitoring server and machine, high um, proxy, MySQL, Postgres, and, and a lot more. Like I think. 50, uh, 50 best spotter available, something like that. Yeah. And it's actually also fairly easy to write your spotter. There's something that called text file collector. Uh, a text file collector, text file spotter. If you don't want to write a full blow spotter, uh, you can just write it down to some file with the same format earlier. Like write something like to a text file on your file system with the same format. And then node spotter can collect it and then expose it for Prometheus to query. Um, the data mod model for Prometheus uh, is primarily time series, and but it's multi-dimensional uh, time series. So imagine a time series is just a, a metric over time. Uh, you have uh, the value at the moment, the value uh, delta t ago, and two delta t ago. And this uh, this is single dimension, like the normal way in traditional monitoring system, when you have a metric over time. And when you start adding label, like for example, this is uh, the number of HTTP requests on host one at this time, at, at the moment, and host two and host three. So you're adding another di dim dimension here, it's become a 2D metric. And, and you can just keep adding, uh, keep adding label. Label is just uh, some key value that you have the host here, but you can also uh, have another uh, label on the HTTP response code. And it will be like, for example, I want to uh, measure the difference between like 200 response and then 500 response. Because 200 response is more important to me than like uh, 500 or like 400 response. So that will be adding another uh, model to this one. And then it will make a 3D matrix. And then I should just keep adding matrix. I cannot visualize that. I cannot under really understand uh, multi-dimensional matrix. But you can, I, you can imagine. And, and the cool thing about Prometheus, it have a very flexible and then powerful query language that like allow you to slide and dice on, on those uh, multi-dimension metrics. Uh, here's some example query that I 
I can try to explain, but like it's not really. Ha it's just ha here to give you some idea about what you can do uh, with Prometheus. So, for example, you can like only care about this instantly, like how many requests that it had, and the other case, like how many, how many uh, fail failures that you have over the last five minutes, like as a number of uh, requests per second. So, these are like only taking the one that I have five XX, uh, response, and then have a rate of it for over the last five minutes. And this is actually different than this is. Uh, like having the number of requests for the last five minutes, but grouping by part. Like you can have the index part, the API part, or the static part differently, and then you can like uh, grouping them differently and then have them uh, as a metric. This is um, this is the one that I said earlier. Same thing that like we can also run something like break linear that like linearly extra uh, extrapolate uh, the this usage. <coughs> this is a uh, file system available divided by file system size. So we have the uh, File system utilization, and then you can uh, predict it linearly, like extrapolate it over the next four hours, and then like check if it's like going over ninety five percent or not. And then this only based on the last hour uh, data. So if you are writing a lot of thing to this over the last hour, this will trigger that like it's going to fire fill your disk in the next four hours, and then you better do something with it. Um, so this is a built-in web UI for our query. It's just a, a Prometheus UI. So you can have your uh, query over there. Anything you can query with PromQL earlier, you can grab it and then you can show it here. And then we're uh, displaying uh, the grab. But, but this looks pretty simple, but it's useful. Uh, you can like, explore, uh, explore and then like, trying out magic. But for, for our system, we're using Grafana for our dashboard. So this is one example of that ball that we have for server. So uh, you have CPU, memory, CPU consumer. This is, I'm not sure that you can see it, but it's, this is our Prometheus server. It's using like 1,000% uh, of CPU here. <coughs> because it's a, uh, I think it's 24 core or something. So like using half of that, and then like 1,000% of CPU just to ingesting metric. And yeah, this uh, you like the reason. I, I think the last version of Grafana have some built-in integration with Prometheus, so you can actually have syntax highlighting, auto completion, uh, writing uh, PromQL in Grafana as well. So, and you there are also some things that you can variable, like templating, and then like doing a lot of things with Grafana. I, I think it's a highly recommended way to use uh, Prometheus, like Grafana and Prometheus. Okay, let's talk about that. Um, so, <coughs> alert manager is separate process from uh, Pro Prometheus that I already saw earlier. It will actually routing alert to different people, different group, and different channel. And also, with like one of the good use cases for us is that it uh, can deduplication. I can deduplicate alert coming from multiple Prometheus. We we normally run one Prometheus or maybe more than one Prometheus. Like uh, we have. We normally run a global Prometheus within a pair that actually have two uh, Prometheus server that are like completely independent, share nothing. Uh, and they, they are sending alert to the same alert manager. And then alert manager would like actually uh, seeing that these are the same alert and then I like, duplicate and then only show one to us. And then if one Prometheus server going down, then it's still okay. Like we're still uh, not flying by. You know, so doing managing silent. Uh, I think one of the struggle with Nagios for us before that actually silence something is actually very hard, and then now it's like much easier with like alert manager. Uh, we actually contributing some of the uh, command line tool like Cloudflare. Uh, we build a uh, command line tool for alert manager that like get merged into an open source project already. So you can like manipulate your silent and then like creating inhib um, silent from your command. This is what alert manager web UI look like. You can have there's an alert there, and then some label with it. Again, it's very simple, and, uh, and then we also have a different thing for alert manager. This is also something open source by Cloudflare. Uh, we build this as a dashboard for our alert because because alert alert manager UI just like uh, unusable from the number of alert we have sometimes, unfortunately. Um, so. This is some, uh, you can see this on uh, Cloudflare GitHub. 
we have like you can filtering, uh, silencing, and then let's see a lot of things. Uh, so uh, it's just a front end for our manager that like doing like as a dashboard for it. Uh, this is a simple example of like what an alert look like. So you can basically just read it like a normal sentence. Alert high error rate if error rate uh, over the last one minute uh, greater than ten, and if that for, uh, happened for ten seconds. So it's a very simple rule that like basically like that. If my error rate for over the last one minute is greater than ten, then notify me about high error rate. And um, the good thing about that is you can have summary to go with it, and then you can template it so that you can like this is from the magic label, and then you get pulled into alert. So it will actually alerting you on like this. There's a high error rate on this machine or like this service, not just like there's some high error rate somewhere. Go figure out. Uh, this is not alert. This is not so uh, simple. This one, the one that I I really want to have before, but like impossible to do without Prometheus. Now I can have it. Uh, so this is a lot thing about this. Like uh, going to fill for the in the next four hours, and I uh, already explained uh, some of that part of that before. Like just predicting the file system uh, availability based on the last hour of data. So this part of me like based only on the last hour of data, and then like. Uh, projecting it over the next four hours, and then alerting it it's going to, to be over 95%. Uh, we can see them labeled, uh, some label that we are using, so that we can like routing our alerts like this, going to over heap chart. And this is also like even like more complicated alert. Like anything you can write with, the good thing about alerting with Prometheus is that like anything you can write in from KL you can use to alert. Not like just some simple condition like it's over this one or it's less than this one. So you can anything you can do in ProQL, you can do alert on it. And this this basically is just trying to alert if our HDMF cluster is unbalanced. Like it's trying to use uh, to to measure the, uh, the the differentiate between the highest uh, use and then the lowest U uh, file system, and then I like, compare it over the whole cluster, and then I like, alerting it if it's uh, the number of uh, machine is over 10. So, so if any machine that have like 10% difference between the highest and the lowest, it will alert on our idea of a cluster is unbalanced, then like, we should do something about it. And this is something I like, add a standard for our alert as well. Like for any alert, you should have a summary that like talking about like what happening in a short sentence way. So the, the person that are like, being on call can have grab what happening in a short sentence. Or you can get this over pager duty and then go to the phone of the people. Uh, this, uh, and then every single alert must have a reference, a playbook, so that they're in the on con, uh, can like, just go in and then following some step to debugging and then like uh, analyzing. There's also a dashboard, if, if, if the uh, service has some dashboard that I like, can help with the uh, incident response or like, alert thing response. Okay, uh, I'm going to show a demo. Hopefully it will work. Uh, the demo will be available uh, on my GitHub as well. Um, my name, Lei Bin. Uh, if you can tell, it's Vietnamese. And Prometheus Meetup demo. Um, oops. I'm just going uh, to run a server here. Maybe I'm just showing up. Uh, Um, okay, this is the code. So there are probably just a simple uh, Flux server in Python that basically this is how you can create some uh, Prometheus metric uh, in Python. There's uh, the Prometheus have a lot of client for I think almost every language like mainstream language. They have Python, Go, Ruby, Java. They are already available, and and basically this one is just going to measure. Uh, I'm trying to just like counting the number of requests that I have over every single part and every single stated code that I get, and and this this part I have a uh, ten uh, ten percent chance of returning a five hundred error. So every ten requests it will return uh, one five hundred error here, and. I'm also trying to like have a histogram over the uh, 
time for it HTTP request. So yeah. Okay, let's get back down. And we can run. Uh, so Prometheus is a, a separate server, and then Alert Manager is a separate server set. So yeah, Prometheus running here, Alert Manager running here. Uh, these are just some simple command to uh, start Prometheus and Alert Manager. So uh, the good thing about Prometheus and Alert Manager is they are written in Go. So they aren't just a single static binary. So you just like compile it and then I like, run it uh, anywhere you want. Like even I can run uh, compile it on my Mac and then cross compile it to run on my server. So yeah, it's self contained. So you don't really need to uh, to do anything. It's just like uh, grab the binary and start running it. And I'm going to do uh, to send a bunch of requests. This might not be easy to see there. It's just uh, running a lot of AB, uh, like a lot of requests to my uh, endpoint, ping endpoint there. And when it starts running, you can go into Prometheus. Okay. And you can start uh, querying. Um, we already had something earlier that like counting the number of requests that we have. And this is what it looks like. So we have like uh, 300 requests here for the ping. The magic request is actually interesting because like Prometheus initiating those requests to grab the metric. Now you can see the metric themselves. Uh, here what it looks like. So this is the metric endpoint that like uh, Prometheus going to script. <coughs> and then the format is like the uh, metric name, the label, and the value. And then like, this is for the uh, histogram. So it looks a little bit uh, complicated, but uh, the HTTP request total is similar. Like it's just a counter, like uh, showing how many total requests that we have over that part and that code. That's what a metric uh, format looks like. Uh, and then from here, we can uh, graphing. And then you can see it going up, like the server start warming up, and then uh, it's not really warming up, sorry. Uh, this is the counter, so that it only go up. Like the more number, uh, the more request you had, the number is just going up. And then this time here, it actually it time permitted like scrape the target and then update the number. So you can have a some shot of a stat line, but it's not really a just the way permitted scraping thing. Um, and then from here, you can do something like going to have the red the rate of uh, how many requests per second that you have. And then it's going to be going to stabilize, stabilize around 10 per second uh, 10, yeah, requests per second. And you can do something like you only care about the number of people. And you're going to show like you have around one error per second. Uh, that a promoter guy. Okay? And now I'm going to change a little bit. Uh, this actually running with the only different is running with like ten different process or ten different client at the same time. The number of there's like ten concurrent requests, so about ten times the number of requests. And we have some uh, rule here that like going to show about the alert that we have. So. This is the alert that we saw earlier about high error rate. If the error rate is going to be over than 10, then I, I will receive a alert notification. It will be high error rate on some instance, and then we will have the number of non 200 is over over uh, the last minute on the part. So you can do also something like instead of having to write uh, this thing all the time, you can like uh, pre uh, recording it uh, using some rules so that I, you don't have to have this long uh, query out every time, I error rate. And you can see like, earlier it's only like about one error rate per second, and now it's going up to like 10 error per second, I hope it's going over 10 or the other way. So I'll add one trigger. Maybe I need to generate more request. 
Oops. Nothing na eh. So, I need to... This lock, I pre-configure it to sending a lot to this uh, channel is lock. So hopefully it will arrive after just a bit of time. Yep, it's alright. So you would happen. I need to zoom it here a little bit. This one just firing. And you can see that like the summary from earlier, like, there's a high road rate on this horse. That how many requests that you have on that part over the last five minutes. Alright, firing. You see it? All right, that's it. That's the demo. I'm just going to not dedosing my laptop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get back to the slide. So we have a pretty big de uh, deployment of uh, Prometheus that Antonio is going to share a lot more about. Uh, but basically, we have we, we this is our point present over the uh, global. And it in every single cent data center, we have a Prometheus ser server running. Uh, some big location, we have more than one Prometheus server running for redundancy, and also to share the load. Uh, so we, we run around like almost 200 Prometheus server around uh, the world right now. I think we are one of the biggest uh, deployment of Prometheus. Um, we have four top level Prometheus server, and those actually ingesting 70 sample uh, per second, and we have like, I think this is like way over 4 million already now. Yeah. This is like a bit out, but like, yeah. Uh, there's a couple of other talks that you're interested. I put the link in the slide. We're going to si uh, share the slide on uh, Meetup later. Uh, there's also a talk about monitoring our uh, planet scale edge network with Prometheus. Okay. All right, that's it. That's, uh, Yeah, um, I don't know if you're using um, uh, LVM, but uh, we have this use case where we're using thin pool. Okay. Okay. So the thing is, what I've noticed, uh, probably I'm not, I'm not aware, but in the node exporter, it cannot, it cannot uh, <coughs> monitor those uh, that are not mounted. That are not mounted. Okay. Uh, thin pool is not um, mounted. Mm -hmm. So, but then uh, that's that's basically our uh, what's this the, the replication of our uh, Docker engine. Okay. Um, do you know about that? I am not so. so uh, did you see his query which says uh, without mount point? So we we, we have uh, as you said like uh, if you set up LVM and you use Docker, Docker will create all these uh, uh, bad leaf, uh, uh, like all the all these mount points, right? And 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 node exporter will start monitoring those. So what we do is, uh, can you go back uh, sure. the slides to the disk one? Uh, yeah. So if you see this without mount point, it can also take a regex. So what we do is without uh, uh, mount point equals to val lib docker uh, uh, dot, uh, dot star or something like that. So so that we can avoid uh, monitoring those uh, those. No, I want to monitor. Oh, you want to monitor? I want to monitor those that are not mounted. Oh, you want to monitor those that are not, not mounted? mounted? That because uh, the simple are not mounted. So you want to monitor the LVM volumes? The, the simple be. itself, the, all those layers that is... The block, block, the block size or the block level? Or, uh, uh, the the block level, not, tra not really on the block level. So the how about you have disk them into like some... You run a cron, then you have disk them to file and then read it from the file. So... Because then, so you, then you don't mount them, but you still see them. So, so one of the things that uh, that uh, Ben uh, also talked about is a text file exporter. So uh, we also u uh, use it a lot, right? So basically, what you can do is you, you know how to monitor the size yourself. You can write a script for it or or, or or do something, right? You're saying that you node exporter cannot do it right now. So yeah, like there are many things that like because the project is so new, there are many things that node exporter still cannot do. For example, node exporter uh, we we have also faced issues where node exporter cannot uh, uh, see temperature. And like they're, they're, they're continuously adding it, and the, if you see the project, they're just moving at a fast pace. But let's say if you cannot monitor something and like no, no exporter does not provide it, what you can do is you can write a script that writes uh, uh, writes a text file 
into a, uh, 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 into that format that uh, that have uh, been showed before, and uh, then Prome then Node Explorer will pick it up and send it to Prometheus, and then you can write alerts and uh, and, and things based on that. Okay. Yeah. We, for example, do it differently. We are not using Node Explorer for Node monitoring. Instead, mm -hmm. they use Telegraph. Okay. Okay. And uh, Telegraph basically does kind of major swing uh, in a way that Telegraph allows you to, to run the scripts. Uh, which uh, directly output uh, uh, basically the metrics with all labels and everyone. So you mentioned that you don't monitor the temperature or something. So we, for example, we have scripts across seven sensors that monitor the yeah. temperature yeah. and they monitor the power consumption, for example, yeah, yeah. in our case. Uh, and they just pull it through a telegraph and, and then implement those collects it, and then the rest is the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's so it's you, it's if you if you can, yeah. if you have a script, uh, you can do it this way as well. I think Antonio is going to share a lot more about that. Like when we are go going to migrate from Nagios to Prometheus, there are probably like there's a lot of cases that like there's just no exporter available for what we are already monitoring. And then a lot of the case, the preferable way would be actually writing some exporter for it because it uh, uh, it actually uh, preferable because like separately from the notice exporter. So even if the notice exporter is down, then your monitoring is not going down together, and then like uh, yeah. decoupling them. But uh, a lot of the time, it actually just like not worth doing it for something that like only you don't really have to uh, maintain very high availability. Then it's simply just write script that going to write to a file that like uh, yeah with with this exact format, and then uh, have node exporter collecting them and exposing for uh, Prometheus to script. Do you do you store your metrics for standards of that? I'm sorry, I are you. Do you store your metrics for extended periods of time? Uh, yes. The question is that uh, are we storing our metrics for a standard of time? Uh, so we are not using Prometheus for that. We only store 15 days of metric in our Prometheus server because uh, Prometheus right now is not focusing on like long term uh, time series database. We, we fit our uh, metric to OpenTSDB so that we can have it. Uh, we are also using uh, Grafana. So, so Grafana also like can uh, query open TSDB and then like showing our metric if it is go over uh, 15 days. Uh, so one thing I'd like to add is that Prometheus storage has been in a lot of flux. Like uh, they did not realize that people would be using it to uh, that scale, like uh, even even our scale, right? So what we do right now is that, as I said, for long term metrics, uh, uh, we use uh, uh, we use open TSDB. But uh, we are like looking at other storage solutions also. As Arsini talked about, that Prometheus has adapters uh, for long-term storage, which are kind of in the beta stage for many of these things. Like 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 yeah. you can show, like you can use InfluxDB, or you can use ClickHouse. But <laughs> yes, so yeah, uh, it's kind of not there yet. So that's why uh, for Prometheus, we don't use it for long-term storage. Okay. Yeah. Now that my my question would be, if someone was experimenting with that. We started experimenting with that click house driver. Okay, that's good. Uh, so I wonder if someone tried it, and this, because obviously we want to. Cool. We, we, we also are a big user of ClickHouse. We, we are experimenting with the ClickHouse. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. what I was going to add, yes. Okay. But I think we don't have, have a conclusion on like, what we are going to you for our long term story. We're still yeah. evaluating it. And yeah. it is uh, for me because I used to be employed of a company which wrote ClickHouse. So. Oh, okay. that's oh, cool. Good. We actually really like ClickHow. It's like power our DNS analytic. Like you go into Cloudflare, and then uh, you see uh, the DNS analytic uh, uh, in your dashboard. It's actually powered by ClickHow. Yeah, we also have one of the biggest ClickHow deployments. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. yeah, but we're looking into that. Like maybe we could use ClickHow. Yeah. I will let you know if, they, <laughs> if one day we decide to use ClickHow. Yeah. All right. Any other question? Okay. Cool. Then Antonio. Then. <laughs>